this is Dread from Epic Builds. And in today's video topic is another special one. Finally, after a year of people telling me to play, I finally bought Wolson Lords of Mayhem. Jokes aside, Diablo 2 Resurrected has been an absolute blast. As someone who does not have rose tinted glasses for the old version, this led me to be a little annoyed with the old graphics. Not because it looked bad by any means. I love the look of all the art. It's more of the fact that visual clarity has become such a problem in ARPGs of late, and my eyes are slowly dying after years of staring at skill trees in various ARPGs, leading me to become much crabbier about this topic. So of course that makes me hype for one of the biggest changes of this re-release, the insane graphic goal update. But what else did the game change? Well, I ended up playing with a friend to level up, as I wanted to play some kind of enchantress for fun, and that's when it happened. The unthinkable. I tried to chat, and the weirdest thing happened. I was told that my account was under review, and I had no ability to chat with my friend. So to Discord, we had to go. I, I understand why this system's in the game. Like, I understand, because, you know, botters and stuff. You know, because like all the botting, the RMT and all that. But I'm just laughing at how random it is. Like, I didn't expect this at all. That was, that was amusing. Overall, though, the game has been very enjoyable other than a few hiccups. I played Diablo 2 in the past, but that was Project Diablo 2. And if you were there when the mod released, I was busy playing Minesweeper on the side while waiting in queue for the game to launch again. And... That's at no fault of the PD2 devs, of course. Server work is an insane pain, and a lot of people underestimate how hard it is to get servers up and running on launch day for hundreds of thousands of people. Like, look at PE. They still have problems with this till this day. So I don't blame the PD2 devs at all for that. It was just a funny little situation, right? So now that the graphics have been, you know, changed to the point where I can actually look at the game without my eyes dying, we can talk about the more nuanced things about the game. And one thing that really irked me through the first few hours of play, and this is kind of a small complaint, is how the potion system works. I know that they want to keep the old system for nostalgia's sake, but I could see them revamping this slightly. Now, the potion buying trick with the re-equipping the belt thing is great and all, but I spent a lot of time accidentally using potions while trying to left-click them into my belt. I'd accidentally use them, and then they would still be consumed, even though I'm at full life and mana in the campaign. So maybe make it so that you can't consume potions if you're at full life. I don't know if there's any case that where you'd want to consume potions if you're at full life, but, you know, like, it's whatever. It's a slight annoyance, but it definitely drove me crazy through the first few hours of play. So I have done a lot of research into builds and videos, and I realized that Diablo 2's complexity does not come from the skill system. The skill tree system is basic, which is funny as this system went to inspire everything else I've played in this genre. I love how basic it is, actually. The skill synergy system is simple, and it solves the old age problem of later ARPGs where if you finally put the last point into the skill that you're trying to play with, and you still have extra points left, you can simply put them in other skills that are synergistic with it and just gain extra damage or extra benefits. I'm surprised that this idea isn't used more, as it made me feel as though I never had wasted points, even when you get into endgame, and when you have all the points, you know, and you can just dump them in your tree and you feel like it's so you never have wasted points most of the time. And to be honest, you can never have enough of them, which is part of my next point. The complexity may not come from the skill tree system, but the gearing system makes up for all of this. The gearing of Diablo 2 is what made me realize what everyone is so obsessed about with this game. As soon as I was introduced to the rune word system, I instantly fell in love. When someone would tell me that they loved D2, they never told me about the rune word system. They would always talk about something else. So I was completely in the dark about all of this until I finally played PD2 last year. Rune words solve one of the biggest problems I've seen in ARPGs in general. When you have items that are chase, 
items that are very rare and need to be worked towards, right? Big ticket items. One of the biggest problems is the binary feeling of having the unique or not, or the item or not. Did Hira drop a Reign of Winter or a Rinkedy Kelman? Did Shaper drop a Starforge or Shaper's Touch? You know, and it feels bad when you're on the end of that. If you didn't drop it, it feels pretty bad, right? Well, Diablo 2 solves that by simply chunking up the chase items into parts. Now, I know that there are sets and uniques, but in my opinion, the rune wards are where it's at. So now, when you're farming for your enigma, you can go farm for the individual runes. And when you drop one piece, the Ja, the Ith, or the Burr rune, you felt like as though you're on the right track. You felt you were one third of the way there. You can physically see your progression towards an item. A big chase item from a big unique boss, if you don't drop the item, you don't have a progress bar to look at. You either drop it or you don't. And you are in the dark on when you'll actually drop it which I think has its place in ARPGs, don't get me wrong, but it's refreshing to have the bulk of the good items to be in a system like the Rune Words. For the longest of time, I would hear about Enigma, Passion, Chains of Honor, Heart of the Oak, but I never knew what it actually meant. Now that I've been able to look at all these, this is where the complexity comes from the game, gearing. I have a friend who I know from last epoch, Lizard IRL. He would talk about gearing for D2 and the importance of gearing a lot. And this is where it all came from, Diablo 2. In games like Path of Exo and Lance Epoch, there are skill combinations that are so powerful that they transcend the need for gear, so they become amazing even with barely any work put into them. Diablo 2 has some of these, but not many. Most of its power is held behind gear, like plus to levels and rune words. There are sets too, but to be honest, I haven't even looked into them much. This means that most of your player power will come from your gear. And that is slightly refreshing because it makes me realize how shallow some gear in other ARPGs actually can be. Now, Path of Exile fixed this problem by having an insane crafting system and just heaps upon heaps of different ways to get the same result. And when you invest into your gear in the right way, you can definitely have a lot of power. But Last Epoch definitely suffers from a lot of its player power not coming from its gear, but coming from passives and skill interactions, which is cool and all, but it does limit how much time you end up spending in your character. I hope Last Epoch comes with a way to fix this system like rune words but not a one-to-one -one copy i hope they go their own way with this but i look forward to their attempts at trying to replicate this system in a good way so i keep saying that d2 solved a lot of problems with arpgs but it came out like 20 years ago what gives well i see it now i see what people are talking about when they talk about the nostalgia what they like in ARPGs, and what games that came after D2 have problems with. They forget some of the things that made this game so beloved by so many people. Now, with the relaunch of the game, the developers have been adding a few changes here and there, buffing old skills that are bad and reworking a few, and there's even rumors about the possibility of actual content being put into the game after 20 plus years of no content whatsoever. It's just hilarious. And of course, I'll be looking forward to all that. If you ended up enjoying the content, I'd suggest liking the video and subscribing to the channel as that's the best way to support my efforts here at Epic Builds and also the best way to tell YouTube that I'm doing a good job. Now I have some more D2 stuff planned for the channel soon. And with all that being said, this has been Dread from Epic Builds. Off to play more D2.